Hello, I'm Stephen, the man with the mustache, and welcome to The Creative Arts Show. This is the show where we aim to promote the creative arts industry and highlight the wonderful people that work within it. Joining us today will be the amazingly talented Mike Snell. He's what Chris Lilly's Mr. G would call a triple threat. He can sing, he can act, and he can dance. Mike has an extensively impressive resume. He's been in shows like Wicked, Hairspray, Baz Luhrmann's Strictly Ballroom, and Disney's Aladdin. Let's meet our guest. Well, the fabulous Mike Snell, thank you for joining us on the show. How are you doing? I'm well, thanks. Good to see you, Steve. Likewise, likewise. And uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background in the creative arts industry and, uh, and some of your work. Okay. Um, well, it's my pleasure to be here for starters. Thanks for having me. I think it's really important at the moment to have the voices of the arts speaking um, on behalf of the arts, you know, um, but I suppose I started my career as a dancer. I was in uh, dancing on cruise ships with uh, Princess Cruises in 2002. Our um, position. <laughs> yeah, yes. And um, so I very much uh, related the very early part of my career to this dance. I just loved to dance. I started very late. Um, I was about 17 when I got into proper training. I'd done some school plays and stuff before that. But then once I found my dance classes, I just got obsessed. It's, it's, it's funny you say that 17 is late. You know, some people have this idea that people should start dancing maybe when they're 8 or 10 or 12. But most of the male dancers I know get into it at that age, towards the end of high school or in college or university. Yeah, I suppose it's because, well, for my own personal story, I was scared of get, getting bullied um you know so maybe was, that's what it is yeah yeah i was like oh my god i can't do dance class you know people might think i'm gay Ugh, you the, know the, so, the stereotypes yeah exactly right yeah so i started late and um it was the best decision that i ever made in my life you know and then i ended up, yeah i was like in la rehearsing and then sailing through the caribbean and then i went to tokyo disneyland um and was in a show called mystic rhythms of the jungle at disney sea resort um, before sticking it out here in Melbourne, you know, back up dancing for, um, there's my cat. <laughs> Frank yes. <Snow. laughs> um, yeah, before you know, doing a lot of backup dancing in clubs and um, then I hit my first professional musical, uh, Hugh Jackman's The Boy From Oz, and kind of went from there. So, well, so what were you doing um, back in March when all this started turning to, to heading south? Okay, so I'd just come off Aladdin last year and decided that I wanted to take a break from musical theatre. So I started doing a lot of uh, gigs at Crown Casino and I was working at a sing-along karaoke bar at Crown called Dukes where I played the role of the Duke. And, um, yeah, so I was doing just stuff with a grand piano, me up on the bar just going, you know, hammer and tack. Um, and I also had just invested quite a lot of um, time and energy and money into my own Freddie Mercury show um, called wow. Freddie Freddie. Yeah, so <laughs> we, we'd just been booking these shows at the Palms uh, with a five-piece band, two backup singers, the beautiful Andrea Arena. At Crown, at Crown yeah. Casino? Yep, yep. Yeah, so I had um, the beautiful Andrea Arena and Romy Bookson as my backup singers and piece band we were just starting to get into rehearsals to do a lot of gigs and it all just came crashing down with you know overnight i think it was grand prix weekend. that's right um, we just yeah we literally had one day's notice and that was it yeah everything stopped one day i remember thinking come on i just want to make it to this friday yeah and do yeah weekend of work you know and you do you just start I remember grasping day by day just to go, come on, keep it at 500, keep it at 100. And then it hit 100 people. Like, and that, it just all went. And then it got worse. So talking about the Freddie Mercury show, um, how you were ready to perform that and you had some gigs locked in or it, it was still in the so, rehearsal phase? Well, it was a bit of both, actually. I, um, I actually played Freddie at the Crown Casino Palladium um, New Year's Eve celebration so i had 25 backup dancers on stage pyro everything uh 
photographed by Yvette Lee, creative directed by Yvette Lee, and booked uh, by Cameron Bull and Crown Entertainment. So it was a massive New Year's Eve show. And so we also did another performance at the Prince of Wales. So I'd started on the gig circuit, but my big show that I was selling to cruise ships and then had been picked up at Crown didn't end up happening. So we were in the rehearsal phase of our longer show, but I had a shorter, a shorter show that I'd done a couple of times. Wow. Okay. So um, now at the back end of this lockdown and when, when things go back to normal, fingers crossed, whatever normal looks like at the end of this, and we'll talk a little bit about that soon, but uh, will that show be still be going or is it just, is it put on hold or has it been terminated? Oh, it's definitely on hold. But yes. What I've I'm discovered. Glad. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. What I've discovered, guess what? I grow a mustache like yours when I play Freddie. Just I For the Freddie, there you go. A lot no, of people no. say I look like Freddie Mercury. They say, oh, you look like yeah. Freddie Mercury. I'm like, that's an insult. He's got horrible teeth. <laughs> well, I know, but he's such a legend. So it's the he biggest compliment. 100%. But um, yeah, yeah I, um, I've chosen to go with the flow now. Um, you know, there was a massive part of me that was like, keep rehearsing your Freddie show every week. And it's like, do you know what? That's very hard for me in my two bedroom apartment here in East St Kilda screaming yeah. you know top seat <laughs> belting belting my face off and also i've focused on other things so okay. i've been focusing on my fitness my mental health yoga mm. um i was live streaming a lot in the first uh lockdown and it just doesn't feel right to keep flogging this rehearsal process yeah. And there's no end game. You know, I'm not the type of person to, when I get a gig and I get a timeline, then I make it happen. Yeah. Hopefully sooner rather than later, you're out there performing Freddie Mercury classics. Cause I'd love to see that. And especially working on cruise ships, that, that show will go down a treat on cruise ships, you know, especially out of Australia and um, all the, all the summer season here, when all the ships come here, you know, that'll be awesome. And hopefully I see you on a ship one day and I'm introducing one of your shows, which will be amazing you know yeah thank you and it is important for everyone out there to not um hate on cruise ships just because of what did happen with the ruby yeah. Texas into australia you know it's it's not cruise ships fault that coronavirus you know, yeah they, they've been painted they've been painted in such a bad light because of the media and uh they haven't had enough recognition for what they've done for the crew repatriating the crew's home and so on my girlfriend uh, she was stuck on a cruise ship and one of our episodes is actually dedicated to her story and what happened, um, you know, uh, with her and, and trying to get back home and uh, just absolutely crazy, but absolutely phenomenal effort from the cruise lines and what they've done to try to get crew home and look after the crew and stuff, which is absolutely amazing. I wish some of that uh, got put in the media and uh, published as well, because that needs to be known too. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. And you know, that's what I'm, I'm not trying to do it, but I do want to become an advocate for for those positive stories because there mm -hmm. is a lot of negativity out there towards what we as artists don't have and what we need more of um uh -huh. and that that needs to be heard but by sending a, a positive story or a positive um message creates more positivity in the world. We can sit around and whinge about the fact that we don't have enough money from the government. And, you know, I mm -hmm. am very upset about a few things, you know, JobKeeper, for example, if you don't have 12 months of employment, you know, some people- You can't, you can't get it, yeah. For the $1,500 a fortnight from the government, you know, yeah. I am lucky enough that because of my, um, situation you know i am eligible but there's a lot of artists out there not receiving that, that aren't exactly right and it's really really tough and my heart goes out but you know those people are being heard and we need i think positive reinforcement is a stronger message mm -hmm. yeah but behavior breeds behavior so if you you know i'm a big believer in that so if you stay positive others that positivity you know, will reflect on others and, and really help them out. Especially, I know there's a lot of people down in the dumps right now that do need uh, to hear some positivity. And that's what we're trying to do in the show as well. You know, really just 
bring out the fact that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and then we will be out there one day performing and uh when we are get out there and go enjoy some performances you know what i mean and, and just enjoy the creative arts industry yes i mean we there is not one doubt in my mind that the arts is over i mean yeah no what is happening in the world right now everyone's at home and they just go click or scroll or netflix that's right you know we are the arts we will never not exist the industry that's suffering the most you know is the same industry that's keeping everyone entertained right now which is so ironic you know it's, it's, it's so weird but um and people need it people need it. it's passion it's uh it's it's uh it keeps people entertained, it keeps people happy, and that's the main thing. So what have you been doing uh, during this lockdown process? Um, how have you been staying creative? What have you been up to? How have you adapted? Obviously, you can't uh, perform. So what have you been doing? Uh, you know, what other avenues have you been chasing? Okay, so I have discovered um, art therapy, actually. So okay. do, you want, do you want to see one of my drawings? I do. I've got one right here. So... <laughs> Here's a little self-portrait. This guy's very here. nice. You know, so I've just been experimenting with just getting my creativity out. You know, in different ways. Um, there's some. Really I like that cool. one. That's cool. You know, yeah. They're, they're yeah. very aggressive and they're very jagged, and I think that represents what's going on. There's New York. Oh, it's how you're feeling. So, yeah. There you yeah, go. Yeah. So. I can't kick a leg, you know, and jeté down my apartment, but I've been channeling a lot of that into drawing. And, That's cool. Um, it's been pretty great for my creative outlet. Obviously, I've been singing around the house, and um, yeah, when I was live streaming in the first lockdown. I've stopped doing that. This one, but, <laughs> okay. um, I've been I've been lucky enough to do a little bit of work on the Mask Singer for Channel Ten, which has been fantastic okay. to be able to get out of the house for a little bit so yeah i felt very lucky in that sense beautiful beautiful and uh you've been doing dance lessons and so on as well i see and you know keep you know educating people which i think is important you know people are at home they're locked down but if you can get some sort of enrichment out of being locked down and learn and better yourself that's amazing so i think that's great yeah so I've, as as you said i've been teaching dance classes via zoom and um it is very important for people with experience to keep handing that down mm -hmm. because it's not just for me to keep within myself. So if I can yeah. share that without sounding too, you know, contrived, but I do this, you know, yummy mummies class where all the mums <laughs> get on the thing after their kids have done the class and then they put <laughs> go have dinner and then they grab a glass of red and we all dance around jump and on like, and have a good time <laughs> yeah and it's just about, it is it's about spreading a bit of joy at the moment because yeah people need it people are in their homes feeling stuck yeah feeling depressed feeling anxious you know these are real emotions that people are feeling i know that in the past i've felt depressed and i've been anxious about the most ridiculous things and now that we're in a real state of anxiety or depression yeah it puts it in perspective you know, doesn't it yeah. yeah it really makes you you know think back and change some of those thought patterns so um you know i encourage everyone out there even if you don't think you can just advertise and you know get a few people in the lounge room and get them dancing yeah for sure yeah get them think. And that, that was one of my questions, you know, what advice would you give to performers right now? You know, uh, you know, got anything more to add to that? You know, advice that I would give performers at the moment is to really focus on self care. Um, yeah. you know, if we hustle, 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 hustle all the time, I don't know about you, but that to me is this never-ending ripping of energy just to try and make mm -hmm. a dollar yes, um, yes. i have been stuck in for 18 years you know i go to the gym every five seconds normally because i you know need to look good i go to yeah. yoga because i need to be flexible then i go back yeah. to the gym because i'm a psycho and then all of a sudden, <laughs> well you know what i mean I've, I've yeah yeah it's, and two workouts a day before you know yeah. in the arts. some of us dancers just go mental yeah. And so 
less focus on your six pack and more focus on your mental your health. Yep. You know, right now, I mean, I'm not at the gym, so I don't have heavy weights. My body is still in good shape because I'm watching my diet. I'm day mm -hmm. 86 sober, so I'm not drinking any alcohol. And, you know, thanks. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good. But um, I'm also doing a lot of therapy and I, you know, I'm dropping the stigma about you know, having a psychologist or a psychiatrist or mm -hmm. occupational therapist or whatever you need, you know, because as I said, depression, anxiety, it is a real thing and it's killing a lot of people at the moment, more than what coronavirus is. It's very important to break the taboo. You know, we go to we go to gym to better ourselves physically, you know, we go on runs and, and you know, we, we try new clothes to look better aesthetically, but um, it's important to exercise the mind as well in the in, in the in the right way. So break that taboo, and I think that's great that you're doing that as well. Thanks. Yeah, um, it's just changing my life, and I'm sure we all know at the moment that what's important is our relationship with ourselves. And it's important, and, and no one wants to walk a path alone, you know. And I think you know you saying. Uh, that I've been to these dark places, other viewers will watch this and get strength from that, knowing that they're not alone in this journey, you know, which is great. Um, yeah, we're, not we're not alone at all. And uh, um, lastly, where do you see the industry going from here? Um, you know, where, wh what's the future for the creative arts industry, more in particular theatre and live shows? Well, um, the government is injecting $250 million into our arts economy over That's the right. next five years with the you know, job maker scheme. We've got $90 million going to show starter loans, which is fantastic for our industry. For you know, sure. I know that it's not going directly into my pocket, but it is going to help theatre companies create new works. It's going yeah. to help ballet companies get off the ground. Like, look at Cirque du Soleil that just went under. We can So sad. So sad. We cannot let that happen to the Australian Ballet Company. We can't let that happen to Sydney Dance Company. Mm -hmm. You know, so this money is going to help. So musical theatre is not a thing right now. So what am I doing? More self-tests, trying mm -hmm. to get on a TV commercial. You know, yeah. deep. just, you know, they're lowering their prices. Or um, uh, what's another brand that might be, you know, online shopping, ASOS, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. I think it's important with the arts to go with the flow to yep. seek other avenues. Yeah. Yeah. Like if I'm just sitting in my lounge and going, well, I'm waiting for legally blonde to come back and I'm not doing <laughs> any work. You know, you can't be so stiff. So we've yeah. got to go with the flow and search for different avenues. Mm -hmm. um, I see musical theatre coming back. It's just going to take time. You, you'd, you'd be silly not to use this time to your advantage and, and uh, tap into something that you didn't know you could have done or tap into, tap into or, or something you already have and, and make it better, you know? So I think, yeah. you know, like, like the drawing, for example. <laughs> that could be the next Picasso and not even know it, mate. Who knows? Who knows? They might sell for millions in an art auction one day. Who knows? Yes. <laughs> Exactly. All right. But that's how art starts, isn't it? <laughs> exactly right. Starts with ideas and a bit of creativity, which I love. Mike, thanks so much. Thanks for opening up with us as well. And uh, I always like to end these shows on a lighter note. So are you ready to play a game? Yes, I am. I'm nervous. All right, <laughs> good. So I've got, I've got 10 songs here uh, from Broadway musicals or just musicals in general. I'm just going to read the lyric and you need to try it. Pick the, just the musical, not, not the song. If you know the song, oh. even better. But you just need to tell me the musical so you can have a wild guess. It's up to you. All right, number one. I'm through accepting limits because someone says they're so. Some things I cannot change, yeah. but till I try, I'll never know. Very good. It is wicked. Defying gravity. Adina Menzel. Awesome stuff. Um, number two, one for one. With how, Tim, the world around me changes, the trees are bare and everywhere. The streets are full of strangers. This is hard when you're not singing it. Yeah, it is. I'll give you one more guess. Come on. I'll, I'll repeat it. Without him, the world around me changes. The trees are bare and everywhere. 
Les yes, Les on my own, Les Miserables. Les Miserables. All right, very good. Uh, number three, I heard about you before. I wanted to know some more, and now I know what they mean. You're a love machine. That might be the giveaway. Oh, you make me dizzy. That might be tricky, that one. Do you want a bit of melody? Yes. I'd heard about you before. I wanted to know some more. And now I know what they mean. You're a love machine. Oh, you make me dizzy. Mamma mia. Mamma mia. Very good. All right. Uh, all right. Number four. All right, all right. That's what I'm talking about. Now, everyone give it up for the maid of honor. Muriel's wedding. No. That's Hamilton. <laughs> That's <laughs> okay, Hamilton. All right. Uh, it's It's... Time now to sing out. This is number five. It's time now to sing out. Though the story never ends, let's celebrate. Friend. Remember a year in the life of friends. Friend. Friend, very Remember good. Love. Seasons of love. Number six. Got to eat to live, got to steal to eat. Tell you all about it when I got the time. Hmm. Aladdin. Hmm. Aladdin, very good. Number seven. Uh, if you find there the meaning of what happiness is, then a new life will begin. Oh, it sounds familiar. You might have already touched on this one. Can you say that again, please, Mr. Yes. Game Show? If, you, if you find there the meaning of what happiness is, then a new life will begin. Cats. Yes. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Memories. Number oh, eight. Welcome. And I don't know if I'm being foolish. Don't know if I'm being wise. That's all you get for that one. Strictly boring. That's there you go. Love is in the air. Uh, whoever's coming up with me, thank you for choosing the ones that I've been in because obviously they're the only ones that I know. <laughs> <laughs> Number nine. And my heart's keeping time to the speed of sound. I was lost till I heard the drums. Then I found my way. Oh, God. You should know this. Yes. <laughs> you, can't, you can't stop the beat. <laughs> Number 10. This one this one's funny. My girlfriend suggested this one. And uh, okay. it's gonna sound it's gonna sound funny in my nasally Australian accent. Inyong Yama Nengweng Nama Bala. Can you please say that? Inyong Yama Bala. Inyong Yama. In really straight, thick Australian accent. In yong yama nyang wang nama bala. In yama nyama nyama bala. Hmm. Hmm. Disney's the Lion King. Disney's the Lion King. Circle of life. Well done, Mike Snell. I think that's eight out of ten. I'll give you eight, eight and a half out of ten. Well, give me a that's six. That's not bad. You know, there was a bit of help. It was an A plus effort anyway. I think you did an amazing <laughs> job. Mike Snell, round of applause to you. Amazing effort. And thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. Um, you know, it's it's my pleasure. And keep doing what you're doing because we've got to spread the love at the moment. It's so important, isn't it? Amen to that. Good luck. See you, mate. Bye. You too. Chookers. Well, once again, thank you to Mike Snell for joining us and hanging out with us on the show. If you want to follow Mike, he's on all popular social media platforms, so you can go check out what he's up to. If you enjoyed today's episode, make sure you hit like, give us that thumbs up, and also subscribe to our channel as well for any future content. But more importantly, share this content because we're really trying to create awareness for an industry that needs our help. Creative arts industry has really been hit hard by the coronavirus pandemic and just getting the word out there will really help us out. Thanks for tuning in to the Creative Arts Show. I'm Stephen, the man with the mustache, and I'll see you next time.